In the ever-changing face of combat, most experts agree the next frontier of fighting will happen from the air. In fact, it's happening already. The United States has concluded hundreds of drone strikes in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. And it continues to test new technologies, including takeoff from ships like the USS Chancellorsville. Over the weekend, a drone malfunctioned and crashed as it returned to the missile cruiser, leaving two sailors with minor burns. The ship is now back in San Diego, where investigators are assessing the damage to the ship and trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. We wanted to get a closer look at how the U.S. military tests new drones and how the technology will evolve in the future. CCTV's Jim Spellman flew out to the USS Roosevelt for insight. There's a new aircraft on the deck of the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier USS Roosevelt. It's called the X-47B, X for experimental, and it's about to make one of its first public flights. But unlike the fighter jets, helicopters, and cargo planes that regularly take off from and land on the Roosevelt, the X-47B has no pilot. It's an unmanned aerial vehicle, a drone. Rear Admiral Matt Winter heads the Navy's unmanned aerial vehicle program. So it is the unmanned carrier-launched airborne surveillance and strike uh, program. Or in Navy parlance, UCAS. Winter says the drones will become a major part of naval warfare within five years. What, what will it look like here on the USS Roosevelt? Great. great. So the, the vision of the future carrier air wing has a complementary manned and unmanned capability footprint. Drones like the X-47B taking off and landing in the midst of battle alongside piloted crafts like jet fighters, able to provide 24-7 surveillance and launch limited missile strikes. Here's how it works. While on the carrier, the X-47B is controlled by a deck operator in a flight suit who uses the control data unit mounted on his arm to taxi the drone and prepare it for launch using a catapult mounted below the deck, just like the pilots in the fighters. The deck operators follow the command of the flight directors, known as yellow shirts. The first launch of the day is scrubbed after communication problems between the deck operator's data control unit and the drone, but the second launch is a go. Once in the air, the X-47B is largely autonomous. These containers inside the ship contain the computers that control the drone, and technicians on the Roosevelt give the X-47B its orders. But the aircraft makes its own flight decisions and can even land back on the carrier all on its own. Drones like the X-47B, which can be launched from aircraft carriers, will make it much easier for the U.S. military to use them around the world. Instead of having to operate out of a land base in a country friendly to the United States, they'll be able to launch anywhere an aircraft carrier can sail. It's a transition military planners say that will give the U.S. many more strategic options. The Department of the Navy is committed to unmanned aviation. But the extended reach of these newest drones is bound to increase the controversy surrounding the U.S. drone program. For CCTV America, I'm Jim Spellman aboard the USS Roosevelt in the Atlantic Ocean. There are dozens of countries with drones in their military arsenal. It's estimated that about 90 countries have drones, a list that includes Iran. The Islamic Republic unveiled a new drone on Monday that it says is the biggest one ever developed in the country. It says it can stay in the air for up to 30 hours. The defense minister said the combat drone called Fotros can fly up to 2,000 kilometers. That's enough to get it throughout most of the Middle East.